Alright, so now we have all these meshes. They are textured and ready to go into an engine. So we're going to be using the UDK, Unreal Engine, um, to put them back into a scene and take that scene and be able to, you know, actually run around in it. So this marks another beginning of another unit. And I would say by now you should have your own pieces. Okay, not these, but your own pieces. They should be all texturized. If you do not have it at this stage, um, you got to really keep up with these lessons because, you know, you can quickly get behind. There's no doubt about it. All right. Uh, one of the one things that we have to kind of look at is uh, what when we get them into the engine, what scale do they have to be in? Because I like to model small, and then I like to just, after the fact, uh, then blow them all up. So, in order to do that, um, I always show this for students, uh, and, and just a refresher, you know, if you take a polygon box and you export that, and I'm going to be exporting it into the same folder that I have that Jason Welsh wore. This has all the textures and FBXs and everything else, so it's going to include everything in here. Uh, this is my cube. And then what I do is, you know, I just go into the engine. And then I'll immediately go to like a blank scene. So the blank scene's already made. And let's make an import here. So I'm going to import from my desktop that little box. And I have to go over this over and over again. So if, if you've ever <laughs> seen this in a lesson before, uh, it's because really students disregard this one the most. Uh, and everything ends up really big, really small, or not not the right size. So I found the only way to do this is to keep repeating myself over and over and over again. So this was uh, zero one where house, and I'll put my name Jason Welsh. Okay, you can have underscores in here, but you can't have an underscore at the very beginning where it will not work. And I'll call this cube and hit OK. All right, so there we go. We got my little cube. Uh, my thing is I got to click and drag that out from the content browser and just kind of zoom in on it. There it is, right there. Okay, as you can see, the center isn't centered at all. Well, this marks one Unreal unit. So our character is 3 times 32, so 96 units tall. In that case, we have to go back to Maya and uh, do a little mental math, or visual math. In order to do that, I set up a grid and the grid is the length and width of one unit and a grid spacing of every 32 units. Okay. Uh, and the subdivision of one. I think that's how I did it. And then I go in here. I go into my side perspective or side view. And there we go. So this this one box should equal 32 Unreal units. Again, just to test that out, what I usually do is upscale my box to about right there, and then just re-export it. Now 
And then over here, I just right click on it and say, reimport static mesh. All right, well, if all else, or if all goes to right, I should be able to lower my grid spacing to 32, which is the bracket keys on the keyboard. And this should fit into a 32 bit square. And sure enough, it does. You notice I can't move it around very well because it's snapping. We'll get to that in a minute. All right, that's perfect. Now I can deduce how big a door is supposed to be and how big a scene is supposed to be. But again, just to make perfectly good sense of it, you have to kind of have a character on hand. So in this case, I just have to find the unreal person in here. And I have a lot of stuff in here, so sorry about that. It's just um, teaching all these classes. I got student work in here beyond belief. And I can't think of the dude's name right now. So uncheck that. Let's go to uh, Skeletal Meshes. Let's choose this option and go to UT Game, and that'll give me every skeletal mesh. And there it is. Uh, it's SKCH Iron Guard. So this is the same scale of the player. So we have to click and drag him out. And if you hit home on the keyboard, it'll launch him. Whoops. Home. And then also if you hit end, it'll drop him to the floor. Notice that he is not on the floor. He is floating above the floor. Well, the floor is actually a static mesh box. And if you look at it, he is right on the red line. But because of his grid spacing, it won't allow him to drop any further. So in this case, I have to tighten the grid spacing up. And I usually go to 1. And that will allow me to uh, drop him down to the grid or to the box. Perfect. So now we have something to look at as far as height is concerned. All right. Well, how can we get all the parts to be the exact height and width of a player? Uh, very, very, very simple. We concentrate on the one thing that's all always the most important, and that's the doorway. Okay. So in this case, uh, 2 times 32. Okay, is the actual do doorway, and in the in Maya, we just have to resize all the parts so that the doorway makes relative sense to three times thirty-two for the height and two times thirty-two for the width. All right, and we have that box right there as a reference. So I'm just going to take all these parts. minus the box in the background. And you notice what happens if I go to scale all these at once, it quickly fall apart. So I'm going to use the group command. And by using the group command, everything scales at the same time. Okay, now I just have to pay close attention to the doorway there. Now it can go a little over 3 times 32, and I would highly recommend it because um, doorways you don't want to be able to hit your head when you're jumping or anything like that. So in this case, now the doorway is 1, 2, 3 and a half heads tall. All others should fall into suit as far as the scaling is concerned. One, two, three and a half. All right. Just to test that out, what I can do is now export, uh, let's say, the doorway into the engine and see if my character fits into it. So in the next video, we'll look at that.